Me and my friend recently committed tax fraud and we were wondering what places to travel to for fun. So the convo went like this. What about France? Like what about Paris? Eh, I don't know man, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I really want to, to be honest. Okay, what about the UK? They left the EU so we'll need a visa but it could be cool. Ah, the UK? I don't know man, I don't know. Now do I really want to get stabbed? Okay, what about Switzerland then? Can't go wrong with that. Bro, we committed tax fraud. We didn't rob a f bank. How do you think we can afford Switzerland? Aye, what about Austria? Okay, Austria's pretty cool, let's go. Now, if you grew up in East Europe, you know that Western Europe is worshipped like heaven and is treated like an utopia. Every East European has one of three endings. The bad ending, war with Russia. The better ending, no war but shit pay. And the good ending, end up in Germany and tweet why your country is the best from your apartment in Berlin. Look, I, I am more white than you. You look gypsy. I am blonde hair. Blonde hair I have. You gypsy. That means that someone fucked your mother that is Turkish, but your father is not. <laughs> There's also an alternative of getting rich in their own country, but for most people, it's way easier to just go to Germany. Whereas I talked about in the previous video about how East Europe has low taxes, Western Europe heard that and told me to go fuck myself and pay 49% tax. Now I'm sorry Scandinavian countries, your cities are extremely beautiful, but if you want me to pay 49% of my income, you might as well fuck my wife and let me watch from the cock chair. There is no way in hell that I am paying another male half of my money. I don't care if I gotta go to war with Russia one of these days. At least I'll have a bit of fun instead of some random dude taking half of my money. Hear that? Norway? I kind of understand why people go to Western Europe to make money though. For example, here are the most profitable jobs in my country of Georgia, located between the funny country and Germany's number one restaurant supplier. Number one, YouTuber. Number two, beating other men up. Number three, truck driver in America. You know what the funny thing is? I met a lot of British people here in Georgia. They're in no way a major source of tourists, but you still see them here and there. And every single time I've asked an Englishman what they think of the UK, I received the word for word same answer. Oh, it's a fucking shithole, mate. Then I Jimmy neutron it, you know? I've watched Doctor Who, I like it. No way the UK can be that bad, right? Yes. Yes, it can be that bad. For example, let's take the worst city in the world, London. London's crime is absolutely insane. The only time Eastern Europe saw similar levels of crime was when the USSR collapsed and everyone started fighting each other. I used to edit videos for a British YouTuber named Hamza and when he moved to London, a good part of London by the way, he saw a delivery guy on a scooter getting beat up and robbed for 20 pounds worth of food on his street. Not even money, literally 20 pounds worth of food. He then googled his zip code and saw stabbings literally on the streets he walks on every time he goes outside. You can also find a ton of videos about how people can't go outside with expensive watches or any kind of drip because they will get robbed on the spot or just stabbed and robbed. But I wanna be fair, not every place in the UK is like this. To be fair compared to Europe, most of England looks like shit nowadays. But there are great looking places such as York in England which looks straight out of a fairy tale. And if you compare the rent prices for this fairy tale land York and then London, it's not even fucking comparable. Here's a choice for you. Live in a fairy tale looking town, extremely beautiful. York looks absolutely gorgeous and pay half of the rent of what you pay in London or live in this prison cell in London for over a thousand pounds a month. This apartment in York is cheaper by 200 pounds and it doesn't even look like you're forced to live there. There is literally no reason to live in London unless you have a death wish, university or business. Me and my dad were driving through the Georgian mountains and he was like, man, this is so beautiful. If only the government took care of the land, it would be the most beautiful place in the world. Dad, I agree, you got a point, it's very beautiful. However, there is also Switzerland, which looks like it fucking CGI. It's so beautiful. Katsu, at last, the trainers have told me so much about you. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I'm trying to know how much it costs to stay in one of those beautiful Instagram hotels in Switzerland. Well, it depends. You can expect a range from $1,000 to $2,000 a night.
I can't afford it, you Swiss fuck. I understand perfectly, you Georgian shit. Now let me talk about the only country who has personally striked down my video, Germany, or better known in Eastern Europe as heaven. You guys have no clue how many people of all ethnicities go to Germany to lead a better life for themselves. Because look, if you're Romanian, Georgian, Turkish, you are not making any type of reasonable money through normal jobs. So a lot of people go there, mostly illegally, to live a better life for themselves or work and send money back home. Because making 3000 euros a month is a lot better than 300. You can just see the math for yourself. This is what it looks like when Georgians enter Germany for work. I'm white, let me through! Now I want to introduce you how Europe gives free visa access to other countries and I made a very very good chart and I think it's very applicable to how the European Parliament makes their visa policy. <laughs> Georgia did not have free visa access to Europe after the USSR collapse but after the national reforms that encouraged all Georgian men to shave their beards, Charles Michel has deemed Georgians white enough to enter the European areas without a visa. Here's me needing a visa and here's me not needing a visa. However, if you're going there to study or work in a company, this does not apply to you because all labor is welcome. Also, there is this phenomenon on the internet that Europe has no gas now because they sanctioned Russia or gas is like a billion dollars now which is just not true. The only two countries actually being affected by it is the UK and Germany. This is because their governments are full with dumbasses who think that getting half of their gas from Russia, a country known for doing dumb shit, was a good idea. But Western Europe comes with a huge benefit, which is no war. I do not see any world in today's age where a country like Germany or France has to draft its citizens to go to war. Because the second Putin flies a bird over NATO territory, Moscow will look like Fallout 3. Russia is a huge pain in everyone's ass, it's a pain in Georgians asses, it's a pain in Russian asses, definitely Ukrainian asses and basically every one of its neighbors. When you go on Wikipedia's list of conflicts in Europe, in the 21st century it was Macedonia and Kosovo and the other ones are just Georgia, Russia and now Ukraine. Conflicts which Russia either armed or started. Oh, for five minutes, could you not be yourself? For five minutes! So not having to pick up a gun and fight the Russian army is cool and all, but to be honest, I would still rather do it than pay 49% tax. You just cannot catch me lacking like that. Also, I am the sponsor of today's video. As you know, my laborers in Latvia have been working overtime to make these shirts, so the shop was frozen during holidays. But these premium quality shirts are now back, 25 and 19 dollars, that's a quarter of a price of a coffee in Switzerland, and instead of overpriced things, you're getting a shirt that's fully cotton and ships fast, unless it's the holidays. And you can get them at cartley.shop. Me of course, being a straight white man, have never experienced any kind of homophobia or racism here in Eastern Europe, except some questionable things I've done. And Western Europe is way way more tolerant in general than their Eastern counterparts. Usually this is a good thing, but there will always be a guy in the comments named Alexa Vladimirovich Z saying I am just a CC European who does not know any better. But who am I to disagree with the wise Serbian holding Putin's picture up in a frame? How are you going to hate on gay people when you as a male are holding up another male's picture in a frame, bro? That's all I want to know. You, sp you, you worked your ass off, you spent your hard earned money to buy a picture of another male and put it in a frame. Just to hold it up to show how much you like him. How are you gonna be homophobic after that? That's all I want to know. So while Western Europe is considered one of, if not the least homophobic and the most tolerant places, this is what any Caucasian country is like. And Poland. And Eastern Europe, to be honest. Take me to church, I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your lies. I'll tell you my sins and you can sharpen your knife. Offer me that deathless death and good God let me give you my life. People seriously underestimate how beautiful all of Western Europe is. No wonder these motherfuckers were fighting all their history for land. Their land is insane. You can take some random ass town in any of these countries and god 
damn this looks good or in switzerland like bro is this fucking skyrim what am i looking at or even france sure amelie's director said he would not make a sequel because paris is ugly now but there are places like Provence, which just look like The Witcher 3. Mont Saint-Michel, like what am I looking at, bruh? And Rocamador, Italy. Do I even have to say anything about this place? And the thing is, the US and Canada are very beautiful too. The only problem is, they would look way, way, way better if they didn't see a beautiful scenery and thought, yeah, this could definitely use a Walmart with a hundred parking spots. Just build a tram or a train or a metro or at least a good bus system and you'll see how easy it is to make your town look beautiful because parking spots in front of a huge dumbass building are the last thing that gives a city its character and soul. I personally am not a big fan of communism, but the one thing those motherfuckers got right was the public transport. Oh, you need to move from one side of the city to the other yeah just hop in the metro and you'll be on the other end in 30 minutes for example here's hassan getting pissed off that georgia has a metro and california doesn't yeah this is actually a really, really side that uh Tbilisi has a metro because it's like the same size as my hometown chilevins which doesn't right but here they do have a metro fucking bullshit dude all these motherfuckers have subways bro they have metro stations are you fucking kidding me dude hey americans how do you like that dude why look at that European cities are usually planned very, very well, which I absolutely love. There is nothing worse than having a city with potential and ruining it by making it car dependent. Which brings me to the Netherlands. God, this place is fucking amazing. So you're telling me I don't have to hear bullshit car sounds when I go outside and I can bike everywhere because the infrastructure is so good? You know what, Netherlands? I don't even mind your taxes. Take my money and let me bike everywhere. Because here's the thing, the more the city invests into car infrastructure, the more cars there are on the road, which means nothing good for your health because of all the smoke, the sounds, and it creates the hellhole called suburbs. I have an American friend living here in Tbilisi from Alabama and he told me that the nearest store to his house was a 40 minute walk away. And having your people depend that much on the plastic shit boxes is absolutely insane. It's like North America wants their people to be fat. You see, people in the Netherlands are way healthier because cycling is not only the best form of transport, but also it makes you active. Rather than sitting in traffic for 40 minutes, hating your life, eating a burger, ah, I'm so disgusting, I just spilled my burger all over my car. Being in a car burns zero calories while cycling is one of the best exercises of all time and you get shit done. Imagine if the Dutch were like, yeah, this is cool, but I, it, it just needs a Walmart, man. I, I just have to see a Walmart here. So if the American government stopped being fucking dumb and actually made it legal to build cities like this, because building cities like this is unironically illegal in the US and Canada, they would basically be fixing their health problem. There would be less car related bullshit like accidents because there are less cars on the road. Going outside and taking a walk would actually be good because if you walk outside and there's a 50% chance that you get hit by a Ford F450 Super Duty, you would not want to go outside. And it also looks shit. So if you walked outside and it looked like this, you bet your ass you would go outside, breathe some fresh air and actually interact with people. European cities support being healthy and socializing because everything is more connected and seeing your friends, even if they live on the other side of the city, is not a big deal. They're just a train away that costs a dollar. It will also support local businesses because people will buy their needs in the stores that are near them or in the same building as them on the first floor. It would also raise the land value of their apartments or houses because it does not look like shit and it looks like a place a person can live in. Also, because there are less cars in Amsterdam, there is less noise pollution and not hearing a truck go by when you're trying to chill is extremely relaxing because bikes don't make any noise. What are you even going to hear? There's a Canadian YouTuber named Not Just Bikes who moved from London, Canada to Amsterdam and makes videos about the differences. There's this place in the Netherlands called Delft and right outside the train station, his decibel meter was showing under 55 decibels, which is literally the same noise that a house refrigerator makes. Just think about that for a bit. Right outside of a train station, the noise pollution was the same of a refrigerator you're probably hearing right now. Oh, but that Walmart though, I need to build 200 parking spaces and more highways. 
fuck the nature, Ford needs to sell his cars. So to be honest, I genuinely think Western Europe is the most beautiful place in the world. They have the highest quality of life in the world, salaries are great, you don't have to fight Russia, which is a massive benefit personally for me, because as a healthy 21 year old Georgian man, my time is coming. <laughs> The taxes are a bit too much for me, but I guess I could figure something out. I'll be going to the Netherlands myself and see how it's like to live as an Europoid. And if I only see smiling faces and just happy people, I will get very jealous. Thank you a lot for watching, like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting me and goodbye.